Hello everyone, my name is Andrew, today we can see learning Python, and today we'll talk about dependency injection in Python. How does it work, why do we need it, and what that is. So let's start. So what is dependency injection? I have a code here, and it will be perfect for us to realize why do we need it. We have base user that contains ID and username. Simple fields. And we also have say hello function, and that function is not implemented. So base user is an abstract base class. It does not implement any functions, but rather works as a skeleton that allows us to inherit from it and um, have all the functions as uh, we need them to. So in our case, base user is just a skeleton or abstract base class or interface if you are from other languages, if you don't know Python at all. Then we have our class user that inherits from that base user and it has say hello function which just prints hello user. Nothing complicated here. And we also have VIP user. So as you can see, we have two classes, user and VIP user. They work similarly because they both inherit from base user, but the only reason or the only difference is that um, inside of say hello function because a user just prints hello user and VIP user prints hello VIP user. And we also have VIP ID in our VIP user. So I just created that code so you can see that we have a little bit of a difference between our user and VIP user, but both of them inherit from base user. And then we have function called process user that we call inside of our main clause. And uh, that function basically creates a user and says hello. If I'm gonna run my code, you will see hello user. So nothing complicated in here. But what is dependency injection and how does it work? So dependency injection can be applied to any method, any function and any part of your code. And basically it says that you need to construct your objects in a separate place, not where you need them. So here we have our object user and we construct or create it directly in the process user function. Why is it bad? Because right now we are dependent on the, really, on the details of that user object or user class. And that is bad because I talked about solid, so solid principles and one of those principles, the last one, D, dependency or dependency inversion, which tells us that we should only rely on abstractions, not on the details of those abstractions because that way we can easily change our classes, change our code, and uh, it's just literally gonna be easier because if we depend on abstractions, our code is very, very, very complicated and very, very dependent on different parts. So for example, here, we have a user and we depend on that user directly because I create that user inside of my process user function. What I can do is accept ID and username here, so that'd be that's gonna be ID and username that we provide to the user and we can easily provide ID and username to our process user here. There is no problem with that. The problem is that we still rely on abstract on um, details, sorry, because we create our user inside of our process user function. And if something happens so that I need to switch my user to my VIP user very quickly, or I need to switch my user to another type of user, to another class, I can do that because my user is a detail and that detail is directly in my code. So the problem with that code is that we can't easily switch our user to VIP user. And that's when where dependency injection helps us to do that. So instead of just creating our user object inside of process user function, what we can do is remove that completely, remove our ID and username from here and accept user as base user. So dependency inversion principle, once again, if you haven't watched my solid video, is um, basically the principle that we need to rely on abstractions. Here I'm saying that my user, I have an annotation that says that my user is a base user. So it's one of the subclasses of base user. And after that, instead of just creating the object inside of my process user, I accept it as an argument. And what I can do here is have my user created in my main clause. If I run my code, nothing will change. However, right now my process user function does not have that, um, that uh, responsibility of creating that object because I created somewhere else. If I want to change my user to VP user, I can just do it just like that. So VP user, um, yeah, we also need to provide VIP ID. So here we have, um, in our init function, we have our VIP ID as the last argument. So that's another thing why we need to use um, dependency injection. So as you can see, hello VIP user. That's how it works. And 
dependency injection allows you to remove responsibilities from from various functions. So for example, imagine that our user um, functions or uh, process user function is inside of services.py file. Our main is inside of main.py or in some some kind of startup file. So startup file. And if we provide all the dependencies inside of our main.py or startup file, what we can do with that is remove direct dependencies and only rely on abstractions in our services and in all the other functions. So basically what you can do is make your whole project rely on injected dependencies. So that is an injected dependency if you still don't know about it. The only reason that we call it an injected dependency is that we don't create the class, the object directly inside of the function and inside of the method. We inject it as an argument. And what we can do is in some kind of main or startup function, we can provide all of those dependencies that we need. So we can provide VIP users, we can provide users and so on. What you can do in advance is have some class, which is called, um, well, you're gonna have some file, which is called containers.py, and you're gonna have some class container, which is gonna contain all of your dependencies. Then you're gonna create that container and say, I want my user, and your user is gonna be user, your VIP user, is going to be VIP user, something like that. So what you can do is basically inject dependencies. The only difference, the only main difference is that you don't need any containers, you don't need any fancy things. The only difference is that you provide your objects as, as, um, as arguments in your methods and functions. That's the only difference. Aside from that, if we think about that, if I provide all the arguments I need here, so ID, username, and Imagine that I need to change my user to VIP user. VIP user has a different constructor. We have, we have VIP ID as another argument in our init function in VIP user. We don't have it in user. We don't have it in base user, only in VIP user. Then I'm gonna need to change my function signature. So I'm gonna add the ID, username, and maybe some other argument like VIP ID, stuff like that. And um, I don't think that that's the best way to do it because right now, if I use normal, I don't know how to go with the value dependencies. If I just create my object inside of the process user function or in any other function, I'm gonna have to rely not only on the methods that, um, not only on the init methods that has that that user has because I'm gonna need to provide all of the all of the variables that my user requires. I'm also gonna rely on the definition of that concrete user on that uh, concrete detail in our code and it's not that great because what you can do is once again just use dependency injection so dependency injection is when you use your dependencies when you create your dependencies in some other place so in main.py or startup and you just apply them or inject them in your code so user don't say hello now we don't have any problem. And if I want, I can use my user. I can use my VIP user. No problem with that. I can use any class that I want that uh, supports that base user abstract base class or interface. And that's how that basically works. If you want me to have uh, an overview of some dependency injection framework, because it's obvious that you're not gonna create all of your classes just like that, because it's kind of difficult. Sometimes you have um, a class, then you need to provide another class, for example, VAP service here, then that VAP service requires API service, and uh, it can be a mess. So if you want me to create a video on a framework that will allow you to easily provide your, or easily inject your dependencies, then just write down that, just write down in the comments. But for now, that's it. My name is Andrew. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel, leave a like, leave a comment, and bye-bye.